Scientists have built a robot that can read minds. The Taliban is no longer allowed to take their guns to amusement parks. And one local police department will soon be texting drivers their traffic violations. These are the weird stories for Thursday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian. I'm your host, Jonesy. I have three segments that are a little strange and odd from around the world. Let's go. (laughs) Scientists invent a robot that can read minds. It's the sound of science. Yes, guys, robots are getting more and more sophisticated. We're making them more and more powerful, smarter. And now there's a robot that can read your mind. Oh, boy. I'm I'm not sure I'm comfortable with this, guys. Seems like we're one step closer to the robot takeover every month. Let's find out some more information. Maybe we can glean exactly when the robot Armageddon is going to occur. And we're all going to have to flee to underground bunkers and defend ourselves from a robot army that could read our minds. I don't know if this is going to work. It says here, the researchers in China say they developed an industrial robot that can read a human co-worker's mind with 96% accuracy. Very accurate. Too accurate for my liking. This robot not only monitored the worker's brain waves, but also collected electric signals from the muscles as it worked seamlessly together to assemble a very complex product. Uh, This is according to its developers. The co-worker did not need, in fact, to say or do anything when they needed a tool or a component. The robot read their mind, read the mind of the worker could recognize what was needed, recognize the intention almost instantly, and pick up the object and put it on the workstation before the worker even had to do it, him or herself. This is some scary shit right here. Now, they're saying that these robots are collaborative. Yeah, that's what they're saying right now before they actually take over everything. They're called collaborative robots or cobots. They say these cobots can accelerate the pace of an assembly line, but their application remained limited because their ability to recognize human intention is often inaccurate and unstable. Whew, thank God. Huh, I was getting really, whoo boy, I was getting nervous there. I was going to have to build a second closet underground to uh, keep, keep myself safe from the robot armies. The researchers are saying, guys, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Humans and robots or autonomous machines have been working together in factories for decades, but are separated by fences in most places to avoid certain accidents. In recent years, some advanced production plants, such as car factories in Germany, have introduced a fence-free work environment with robots that swing into action only after a button is pressed. Such machines are equipped with safety sensors that stop them immediately if they come into physical contact with another human worker. Uh, Some research teams have tried to build a new generation of cobots that can guess human intention by monitoring their eye or body movements. However, these passive approaches suffered from problems like slow response and poor accuracy. To overcome this, the robot created by this team was put through hundreds of hours of training by eight volunteers. And now the robot is in a situation where it can almost accurately read the intention of the worker and is working very closely with the worker, unlike before. It's a big step in cobot technology, apparently. Seems to me they're very excited about this cobot situation. My question is, why don't you just have the robot do all the work and we'll just sit around and smoke hookah? What about that? I think that's a way better use of this whole cobot situation. Let's not do cobot. Just do take the robot. Hey, man, you can read my mind. You know, you know what I need to build? You do it. I'm going to sit here and play mahjong with my friends. Sip some delicious Cabernet from Trader Joe's. <laughs> Anybody like the three buck chuck? Get to work, robot! I'm trying to finish my three buck chuck! China is using robots in place of workers. For, there are about 246 robots for every 10,000 workers in China, which is twice the world average. So we're getting to the point where the robots, um, if they don't kill us all, they can work on our industrial lines and we can just kick back and you know watch nfl highlights whatever we like to do make more rap albums there's not enough rap albums in the world guys the taliban have been told they can't take their guns to the fun fair can't take your gun to the fun fair 
Taliban fighters no longer allowed to carry their weapons in amusement parks. This is according to a group's spokesman. Uh, They say that this is an effort by the country's new rulers to soften their image. They want to soften the image. Hey, guys, look it. They're not taking their guns on the roller coaster. They're swell guys, aren't they, after all? (laughs) Come on, guys. Look it. They're not taking their guns to the meditation classes in the park, to the yoga, to the downward dog yoga. You know, look at them. They're sweet guys. Ah, they're not taking their guns to the movie theaters. You know, they're sweet guys. You know what's crazy is it seems like the Taliban have stricter gun laws than the state of Texas. This is what's crazy to me because <laughs> I'm pretty sure you could take a gun to an amusement park in Texas. No problemo. It says here the Taliban fighters, many of whom have spent most of their lives in a 20 year insurgency against the U.S. backed government flocked to amusement parks in Afghan cities and towns after they took over in August. Yeah, I saw the pictures of them on jet skis and stuff with a AK strapped to their back on a jet ski. Good times, good times. There's a quote from a Taliban spokesman. How do you get this job? I, I, I couldn't handle this job. You just say the one wrong thing, they just cut your head off. So, <laughs> can you imagine being a Taliban spokesperson? There's so much pressure, pressure in that one position. Here we go. Mujahideen of the Islamic Emirate are not allowed to enter amusement parks with weapons, we're saying, military uniforms, or vehicles either. They are obliged to abide by all the rules and the regulations of amusement parks. Then there's a photo of a bunch of guys with uh, automatic weapons or semi-automatic weapons standing outside a roller coaster. It's pretty... uh, They're not smiling, although they're in the presence of a roller coaster. They don't look like they smile very much. They need amusement in their life. They need fun fair. You guys, guys, get on more roller coasters over there if you're listening to me. Or the pirate ship. You know, the tilt-a-whirl. You need more tilt-a-whirl rides in your life. Water parks, huh? There's not much water over there. I, I don't know the cost of bringing water. Enough water out in the desert to make a water park. But it looks like they need a water park in their life. Maybe more water parks will be like, maybe they'll start not wanting to bring their guns to anywhere. Not even weddings, you know? Maybe it'll really soften them. They need some fun. That'll soften them up. A little bit of fun. Box of Twinkies. Um, The article goes on and on about the Taliban earning a reputation. We don't need to talk about that. We know what they're about. Oh, it says here, one of the big-time attractions for the Taliban fighters is uh, one of Kabul's largest amusement parks and a water slide park at the Karga Reservoir in the city's outskirts. Wow, they do have a water park, sort of. That's pretty cool. They need that. Fighters clutching automatic rifles queued for up carousel and swinging pirate ship rides with regular visitors looking on nervously. (laughs) That's, yeah, sure. Imagine you're waiting in line for the pirate ship and there's a bunch of dudes holding uh, semi-automatic weapons behind you also waiting to get on. Yeah, bringing a gun on a roller coaster, that seems safe. Like, that's not just going to pop off. (laughs) This is... They got problems that I've never, I could never imagine wrapping my head around. I don't know how you deal with this. It's a nightmare situation. I mean, this is a place where you have to proactively make rules that are like, hey, no shotguns in the hot tub, okay? We're going to have to put up that sign. Although, again, again, stricter gun laws than Texas. <laughs> Ridiculous. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. Yay! A local police department will soon be texting drivers their traffic tickets. Wincrest, Texas. It's a concept never done before. It's about to happen for the first time in Texas. Getting a traffic ticket sent to your phone without even a police officer pulling you over. One police department will be the first in the nation to test this system out. Here's a quote from Val Garcia, who's president of the Trusted Driver Program. Well, you know, it's not a 100% solution, but it's a step forward in the right direction, I think. Yep, yep. 
Val Garcia is one of five former officers. They're part of a big team that created and developed this program. We're very proud to give back with what we've gained with our own experience as law enforcement officers in the past. All the members of my team has a background in law enforcement coming from different sectors. You got, you got the patrol level. We have, a, we have someone who spent time in investigations, an individual who spent time on tactics and those kinds of units that you know, involve how officers handle certain situations and whatnot. Most importantly, we got an individual who spent his career as a safety officer. Safety. Yeah, safety officer on the east side of town. We got one of them guys. We got him right there. right on my team. Hey, I like that guy. He's cool. Now, this is not an app. Trusted Driver is a web-based program where drivers can avoid seeing a police officer face-to-face and instead get a ticket via text message. You know, if we minimize the interactions just for minor traffic violations, they, you know, they, they got more time to dedicate to serious crimes, these officers. You know, like DWIs, you're drunk driving, people like that. You know, there's people reckless driving, a lot of racing going on. People like meth, people like that meth, they get, they get the meth and then they drive around. Sometimes they drive around with animals inside the front seats, gators and tigers and what. This is Texas, a lot of tigers. You never know what you're going to find when you're pulling over somebody driving erratically. They could be all messed up on the bath salts or maybe a tiger took the wheel. You don't know. You got to find out for yourself. Pulling them over takes a lot of time and you are just trying to give the officers time to deal with serious stuff. You know what I'm saying? Now, if y'all live in the area, if you want to get started, you can register for the program at MyTrustedDriver.com and you enter your information Create a profile. Yeah, just create that profile and get ready for the tickets to roll in. Who's doing this? <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, guys, we're going to give out a lot of speeding tickets with this new program. Um, we don't have to actually catch you in the act and pull you over. We don't have to do much effort. So do you want to get a speeding ticket a lot easier than you normally would? <laughs> Quicker? <laughs> Sign up for this program. Who's doing this? It's almost as though these people don't understand, like, just uh, human nature says after you register as a trusted driver, anytime you commit a minor traffic violation, the police won't even turn on their lights and pull you over. Instead, an officer runs your license plate, verifies that you're the driver, calls up your trusted driver information, and sends a text message with a warning or a citation right to your phone. I, I don't want to do this. I want you to try, officer. First of all, you got to come catch me. <laughs> like I want more steps between me and the ticket, to be honest with you. I would never sign up for this. And if you do, you're silly, silly, silly individual you are. Here is one caveat. It says, if you wish to contest your ticket, all court proceedings can be handled virtually uh, through the program. Now, from my understanding, a lot of this stuff was happening virtually anyways, so I don't even know if this is a bonus. But contesting your ticket virtually is pretty helpful. Uh, I'm, I come from the, the stance of you try to contest every ticket. <laughs> Just put some time between you and giving... <laughs> The local government your money if you can if you can yeah trusted drivers free citizens can opt out anytime it says here we're very proud of this we hope we have a lot of participation i do believe it's probably something that's going to spread probably entirely across the nation i would bet totally <laughs> oh come on man here's what i like about it is fewer pullovers on the side of the road which oftentimes lead to vehicles, oncoming vehicles, slowing down, passing vehicles, slowing down, because everybody's got a rubberneck. What's he pulled over for? What did he do? What's the, well, I wonder what's going on over there. And it's always just idiots that want, what's going on? I wonder, I see lights, pretty police lights. And then they, everybody slows down. Just guys, just keep driving. Who cares? Unless it's a seven car pileup, there's nothing to see. Trust me. Somebody giving out a ticket. It's like not, my goodness, how boring is your life that you got to crane your neck to watch that shit? Yeah, so at least it would stop a lot of that because that just causes unnecessary traffic backups, in my opinion. But still, I don't like the idea of um, getting on board with the situation where I can get the ticket a lot quicker without them doing more work. <laughs> I do not like that. What do you guys think of this? Call the show, 646-450-2012. <laughs> Hey, friends. How's it going? Thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time. Uh, today's Thursday, by the way, so tomorrow's Florida Friday. And if you'd like to send me some Florida-related stories, please do so at funnyjones at gmail.com. Or you can send them to me in a DM on my Instagram, at funnyjones as well. Or on Twitter, at funnyjones. 
Uh, I want to thank Darius, a longtime listener of the show, who wrote me a, uh, an email, an emotional email called WTF, Jonesy. Cheesecake and walk around the rim of a volcano? Jonesy, you're a bloody head case. That's a compliment in the UK, by the way. Love you, dude. You start my day off much better. From Darius. Well, thank you, Darius. This is a great email. I guess I'm a bloody head case, which is a good thing to be in the UK. <laughs> I love that. A bloody head case. I'm going to use that over here in the US. See if it catches on. You're a bloody head case. Bloody head case, mate. You're a wicked bloody head case, bro. Um, also want to give thanks and praise to a new patron. Marie Becker joined the Patreon today. Oh, I got the email this morning. Thank you, Marie Becker, for joining the Patreon. Oh, yes, you've joined the Patreon, Marie Becker. Oh, yes. You very supportive, supportive young woman. Oh, very good, very good. Enjoy the extra content that's inside that Patreon. Oh, yes. Videos of me speaking to the screen. Oh, who wouldn't want such delights? <laughs> I did record uh, and upload one video recently of me speaking to the screen. It was my Ask Jonesy Anything video. It's 45 minutes long. I'm answering a lot of weird questions. You might want to check that out first thing if you go in there, Marie. Please enjoy that. Or any of the other extra content that's in there. There's a lot of crap in there. Um, and enjoy that good feeling that you have, Marie Becker, for supporting uh, the only five day, five day a week weird daily news podcast. Uh, that I think is in existence. Um, yeah, so appreciate that. If you guys want to join the Patreon like Marie Becker, go to patreon.com slash weirdafnews. Sign up. Download the Patreon app. Do a search for Weird AF News. Do it that way. Go to go to weirdafnews.com. Click on the Patreon banner. The banner, bro. Click on the banner. That's how we say banner in Boston. Banner. David Banner. You know? F the friggin' Hulk. Was that his name? Something banner. It's a friggin' Hulk. The dude was wicked green, bro. What's up with that? Strange choice. It was a strange choice. He turns green. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure there's a scientific reason behind it that some of you nerds can tell me. Uh, okay, so tomorrow being Friday, leave me some, uh, send me some Florida articles. And uh, if you want to call the show, 646-450-2012. Love to hear from you. Take care, y'all. Hey Jones, it's Lisa from Huntington, West Virginia again. Lisa Blankenship. Um, I never did like McDonald's hamburgers. <clears throat> the meat to me didn't feel like hamburger or taste like hamburger. But I love, love, love their fries <clears throat> and uh, their milkshakes. But I'm only 90 pounds and 4'11", so I don't eat very much at fast food restaurants. But I do love their fries. I couldn't imagine what a lot of people would do if our McDonald's would close. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got sort of a froggy in my throat. Ribbit, ribbit. <laughs> but um, I'm one of your number one weirdo fans, so keep doing what you do, Jonesy. Love your bunches. Bye. McDonald's is no longer in Iceland. Um, and I, I, I'm okay with that. I think that's great. They, their population is probably healthier and better off, and they don't need to be exposed to McDonald's. Um, I mean, I've heard story. You know, I think you did a story that the court in Ireland ruled that Subway's bread is not bread because it contains too much sugar, and like there, that's true. Like Subway, McDonald's, all of it. Um, you know, American fast food. It's terrible. We shouldn't be exporting it around the world. Um, I think there's been a huge rise the last several years, you know, decade even, there's been a huge rise in Asia, in Japan and China in, you know, health problems that Americans have, obesity, heart disease, cholesterol, being overweight, you know, just the whole thing. The countries and like the Mediterranean and Asia, those countries have not had those types of health problems that are related to the American diet because their diets are not based on beef and potatoes. And so when we're exporting our terrible fast food and, you know, terrible food over to them, they're just going to start having the same health problems that we have, and that's that's not a good thing. So, I mean, I would vote, like, the less countries that have McDonald's is better. You know, we need to shut them down unless they're going to drastically change their menu and cut out all the preservatives and get all the chemicals out of their, the wrappers that they put around the food. I mean, they're not going to do any of that because they just want to make a dollar.
and they know that we're all hooked on it and addicted to it. So it's a terrible situation, but that's what it is. So um, I'm glad that you got some good reviews. You let a, you read a lot of reviews on the show, um, mostly good. The one bad review even made me laugh that she said she still keeps listening even though she doesn't like it. I was like, oh, you know what? I mean, a listener's a listener, right? Um, sucks that she gave you one star, but you had plenty of good reviews to make up for that. So keep doing what you're doing. Go let the bad reviews get you down. I love you. Weirdo Nation loves you. We all love you. And good luck with your life, man. Hey, Jonesy, it's Lisa from Huntington, West Virginia, Lisa Blankenship. Um, I'm very short. I'm only 4'11", so I kind of go for uh, short guys. Um, of course, I'm married, but um, my guy's kind of short. He's 5'6", and I'm 4'11", but um, I have dated tall guys, too. But, yeah, that guy... A donating sperm, as long as he's safe about it and people want kids. I've had seven miscarriages, got one grown daughter. I think it's a nice thing, but um, and then I got one grandchild that's three, and it was sad, all the miscarriages, but I'm past that now. So uh, I still love your show, buddy. That guy's doing a great job for people that want kids that can't afford the sperm bank, it's kind of expensive. My daughter couldn't afford it, so she adopted a 14-day-old child when his mom was drug addicted and made him drug addicted at birth. We've had him in our family since he's 14 days old. His name's Christopher, like you. But we love you so much, Jonesy. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>